What's going on, people? It's your man, Just Jay Sama, back with another episode of the Canon Culture Podcast, the most consistently inconsistent entertainment commentary podcast. I'm here with producer Plank today. Um, and we took a vacation, man. Um, I definitely needed one. It was much, 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 much... <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, man. I, I needed it. I absolutely needed it. I saw your message that one day when you were, uh, I think, in Newark. Uh, my pops got COVID, so I was like, well, this is fucked. I was like, well, I don't want to ruin your shit, so I'm just going to fuck off. Nah, I was trying to I was trying to record. Oh, you were? Yeah. Really? On vacation? Yes, sir. On vacation. I went to um, WTF Media Studios and um, over in Brooklyn. And mm. I was like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm a big fan of this podcaster and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I was trying to get a job at their studio here and i was like i was like yeah i'm in new york i wanted to come and use the facility or whatever and they were like oh okay and i showed them all like the podcast and everything and they were like yeah we can we can give you a trial if you want so i was like all right dope and so when i got there like i had hit you up before i got there <laughs> and i was just like well if he responds he responds and so when i got there it was just like Oh yeah, did you want to use any of the studio rooms or whatever? I was like, nah, I'm I'm actually just like gonna shadow people if that's okay. Um, so that was a very very interesting experience. Um, and so I brought a lot of the information that they gave me back here. So I'm gonna apply to the studio again and see if I get it. So in New York? Uh, yeah, I'm applying to the one in New York and the one here. So. It'll be okay, dope, man. It'll be dope. Yeah, I already, um, while I was out there, man, yo, I, just to start, like, this was a very interesting experience. Um, <laughs> I don't know what type of revelation I was supposed to have by, like, because at first it was just supposed to be, like, a, a vacation to Vegas for, like, a week uh, just to, like, hang out with my dad and, like, and stuff like that. And then he was like, oh, do you want to, do you want to go to New York? I was like, fuck yeah, I want to go to New York. Absolutely. And uh, he and my brother were going to the Giants game that weekend. And so there was like oh. a lot of back and forth about, uh, you know, when we're doing what and how everything's getting done and stuff. And my dumbass dad wanted to rent a car being in New York. And I was like, have you never fucking been here before? Like all this other shit. And him claiming like my dad's like a big talker for no fucking reason. He was like, yeah, you know, I used to come here all the time and blah, 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 blah motherfucker does not know the subway system motherfucker does not know the fucking boroughs he doesn't know shit like i've been doing research on this trip for years because like i've always wanted to go to new york like i i it's just always something that like specifically going to to manhattan i was like all right let me let me learn as much as i can so of course the first day let's see we leave at like 9 p.m my time right i get to uh let's see we leave vegas and then we go to phoenix to pick up my brother and then from phoenix we go to newark right so we leave the first flight maybe like nine ten o'clock or whatever get to phoenix hit the 11 o'clock flight take the red eye we land in newark at around like 7 a.m and i'm ready to go like i see the sun is coming up i'm like oh i'm about to hit the city this is about to be great you know can't wait to see this spot this spot i already have everything mapped out the way i want to go or like the where i want to go and like what i want to see and stuff these motherfuckers are asleep the whole day oh that was that tweet yeah, yeah yeah we didn't leave the fucking we did not leave the fucking hotel until like 6 p.m that night and i was just like i was like all right i don't really know like how I'm going to get out of Newark or like, you know, I don't want my family to think like, oh, you just, you know, ditched us or whatever. So I, I stayed in the room. I was just, I was just chilling. Like, you know, I got everybody food. I got everybody breakfast and stuff. My dad thinks like, hey, I don't know, for some reason, this motherfucker treats me like I'm seven, eight years old. I was like, dad, like I can get us a town car for like X amount of dollars just to like take us to the city and, and bring us back later. Like, and he was like, no, 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 no. We need to rent a car so we can go and do whatever we want and drive around and blah, blah, blah. I was like, for what? Like, just take the fucking, just take the fucking train. So we argue almost all day, almost all day about like how we're getting around, what we're going to do and shit like that. It gets to be like 6.30, 7 o'clock. 
And he's like, all right, fuck it. We'll just, we'll just do Jay's idea and we'll, we'll get on the train or whatever. At that time, I was like trying to piece it together. I was like, okay, there's definitely a freeway for us to get halfway to the city. And then otherwise we can like pay to get an Uber. I was just trying to pay to get an Uber. Like I didn't care about like spending 60 bucks to get to Manhattan. No problem, whatever. This motherfucker's like, why would we do that when we could just pay $5 to take the train? First of all, train's not five dollars. <laughs> the train is definitely not five fucking dollars, especially when you're taking New Jersey Transit. Which that that in itself was like, thank God I had like enough money to figure out like how to get around and all this other shit. Cause I think I got lost twice while I was there. And like both times I ended up figuring out like where the fuck to go and how to how to get there. So we take the first train, that's cool. And then we take that to Penn Station. We take Penn Station to uh madison square garden so that was cool uh got to see that got to see the empire state we go to this barbecue joint that's off of 42nd and what the fuck is it it's like over there by Times square right and mm -hmm. this motherfucker swears up and down this is the greatest barbecue in the world like he's like yeah i've never had barbecue like that that shit was mid that shit was mid bro not only was it mid but the atmosphere of this fucking restaurant was like if walmart was a restaurant like, you know how Walmart is always chaotic as fuck and like there's like little kids running around and shit and they only got one fucking lane open, but like 47 fucking lanes, period. Like, yeah, it yeah. was like that. That place was fucking terrible. So we're there for like an hour and a half eating and shit. I'm getting pissed off because I'm like, all right, well, after this, he's going to want to go back to the room. So I take off for like a good 20, 30 minutes. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, bro. I walk around Times Square. I, I go to, I make it all the way, I think like halfway to Rockefeller Center before I was like, man, maybe I should go back. So I walk for like 35 minutes or whatever and I come back and I get back to the table and my dad was like, all right, so you, you ready to go? <laughs> and I was like, go where? Like, where are we going? And he was like, well, we're gonna go back to the room. I'm like, nah, I don't think I'm gonna do that. We've been outside the, the hotel for a total of two hours. I don't wanna go back. Like, <laughs> and he just like kind of cops his attitude with me. He's just like, well, why? Like, we wanna go. Like, I was like, okay, well, I'll walk you guys to the train station and you can take the train back. I'll figure it out. Like this, the city literally like doesn't stop running. It's 24 hours. Like there's nothing that's, like if I wanted to, I could sit around in the same restaurant for like days. Like, who cares? And uh, so he's like, all right. And my dad has a broken foot. So he's like moving around on crutches and shit like that, which already is a huge fucking hindrance to the to the trip. So we go walking around. New York and <laughs> yeah. He's fucking at, like, not able to walk. And you guys are just walking around New York. I know. I know. What the so, fuck? So anyway, so we... We walk around Times Square a little bit and like, I'm not phased by it at all. Like we're taking pictures and all this other stuff. Cause I was like, I already had like my time to come to Times Square. What like, whatever, no big deal. He makes it probably like 45 minutes before he's like, all right, I, 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 I think I'm done. I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. And he's like, and my brother goes, well, you know, if Jay wants to stay out, you know, like we can, like, we'll go back to the hotel and you know, like I'll sightsee with you. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'd rather just do this by myself. So trying to get from Times square back to newark was was not confusing until we got to uh the water essentially so we like we get to penn station and then for some reason like the new jersey transit is impossible to find like we're following the signs and like looking at like the abbreviations and stuff like that and trying to figure out like okay so which one of these is gonna take us to where we need to go and so i asked one of the kiosk ladies and my dad is just like, oh yeah, my son doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about and all this other shit. And bro, I'm sitting here baffled. I'm like, yo, you were about to be this way the whole fucking trip. Uh, yeah, he was. He was like that the whole fucking trip. Questioning everything I, I fucking studied beforehand. The fact that I was like, yeah, you don't need a car to come to New York. All this other bullshit that was going on, right? End up finding out which train to get on to go back to New Jersey. Uh cost like five bucks i think we spent like 15 on the one-way pass to get there which i didn't know you could just take the path the path train just like is the same route and it would have taken us all the way back to the hotel like i had no idea so mm -hmm. and it was significantly cheaper and faster didn't even know until the next day but anyway besides that we get back to the hotel i don't want to go to sleep i don't want to do nothing you know this is my boohoo trip 
You know what I mean? Like, this is my, oh, mm. Jay's so sad. Like, you know, get rid of the depression trip. Bro, I probably sleep for like maybe, I think we got back to the room maybe like two because it took so long, like to find the, the right trains and shit like that. And then they took forever to get to where we were going. So I sleep until about two. I wake up at six. I order these motherfuckers breakfast. I pay for everything. And my dad's like, how are you paying for this? I was like, yeah, because I used to be a Postmates employee, like, it's just free. Like, don't worry about it. Like, and he was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I used to do this with my with my ex all the time. Like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And he was like, you're not using her credit card, are you? I was like, I could have did that, but not, I mean, because it's still in my app. But no, I didn't do that. Like, why are you concerned how I'm paying for breakfast? Like, you're fucking eating. Like, who fucking cares? Pissing me off the whole fucking trip, bro. So I get ready. Mm. Uh, and they want to go and do all sorts of dumb shit for the day. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that at all. Uh, so I spend maybe the first day hanging out with them uh, a little bit. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go explore the city because, you know, it's just a lot easier. So I take the the shuttle from the hotel to the, to the uh, airport. And then from the airport, I hop on the... Uh, the train to Penn Station and from Penn Station I hop on the path pay the little $2 or whatever which come to find out I didn't even have to fucking do that because um, <laughs> mm -hmm. when you're coming from the New Jersey Transit you could just use your regular ticket if they don't take it and you could just get on the other train I had no fucking idea um, so I did that got to Madison Square Garden went to go see the Empire State Building that was pretty cool uh, I ended up not wanting to like take the train to get to um where is it like f first and like basically like on the south part of manhattan island like where the empire uh, where the uh where the world trade center is so i end up walking like 80 some odd blocks just like taking in the city bro just like seeing everything i could see i went to the um world trade uh center like i saw the two giant fucking holes in the ground that was cool i didn't know they had like that mall that was there underneath so that was kind of crazy um seems a little disrespectful to have a mall under the 9-11 memorial but i guess whatever <laughs> so i go and i see the statue of liberty i go to wall street you know all the touristy stuff man and then so my dad hits me up and he's like oh hey can you meet us up later we're gonna go to this soul food place over in harlem and i was like yeah for sure it's maybe about like 4 30 right i have plenty of time to get there He's telling me his ETA is going to be like 630. <laughs> He's like, we rented a car <laughs> and we're going to drive to Harlem. Like, it's going to take you two hours to get to Harlem. I'm like, dog, this, the, my, my train app says I'll be there in 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, how stupid are you? <laughs> so I'm exploring a little bit more. I go back to Madison Square Garden. I go and I see, uh, Grand Central Station, Pershing Square, all that cool shit, bro. Like, I'm excited. I'm bumping into people and, like, I'm excited to be there. I start talking to this one dude and this other lady and, like, I'm actually, like, interacting with people. I was like, oh, my God, this is dope. Spent too much time in Hell's Kitchen only to realize, like, oh, shit, it's, it's almost 6 o'clock. Bro, I end up getting on the wrong fucking train. <laughs> I end up getting on the wrong train, going in the wrong direction. I end all, I, I end up all the way back at the Statue of Liberty where I started. <laughs> oh shit! So I was like, okay, it's not a big deal. Like at that point, I had learned the subway system, uh, like getting on and getting off, and like what trains go where, and like how the routes work and everything. Um, why there are five fucking tracks underground, like for the subway. Dope shit makes way more sense there than it does here in LA because we have a very similar system, but like. Like, if you don't know where you're going, I mean, obviously, you just don't know where you're fucking going. New York, way more confusing at first, but way more convenient once you figure out how it works. So I hop on the one. I take the one all the way up to, uh, what street is that? It's like Central Park, basically. And I switch over to, like, the blue train or whatever, the A, C, and E. So it turns out that the C train actually is not running in between 42nd and, like, 168th or something like that just that train specifically so i walk up like nine or ten blocks and at that point i'm in fucking central park and then i was like oh i could just take the d train hop on the d train this is like meanwhile this is in a course of like the 30 minutes i said i would be there at 6 30. my dad texts me and he's like hey we're gonna be there at like 6 45. i'm like all right no big deal i realize i'm still almost an hour away 
Ugh. And so I'm like sitting, waiting on the D train or whatever. And then by the time I, it comes, it gets on it. My dad and my brother are blowing my phone up. Like, where are you? Where are you? Blah, 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 blah. I'm talking to anime girl at that point. Like she and I are on FaceTime. Like she's just like super ecstatic to see like, cause she never got to see, when she visited New York, she never got to see uh, like the city. She only got to see like upstate. And so mm. I'm telling her like, oh yeah, I'm marking this place for us to come and blah, 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 blah. And we'll go and we'll hang out and we'll do this. And so she's sending me food places. And I, and there's one over in Hell's Kitchen called uh, uh, Peachy Keen, right? It's like a 1970s, 80s disco vibe type of uh, bar and restaurant. Bro, fucking fantastic. But anyway, we'll get to that part of the story. So I ride the train up to, up to East Harlem. And I see nothing but niggas everywhere. I'm like, oh, this is the part of the city. Yeah, yeah, this is it right here. But the sun is going down. And I'm like, what's that smell? <laughs> and um, Harlem, not a great place to be at if you're lost, a tourist, you look like a tourist, and you have no idea where the fuck you're going. So I'm walking around, I'm looking at my Google Maps and my Apple Maps and shit, and I'm turning the corners and like looking around. These are huge, gigantic blocks. First of all, traveling in Manhattan compared to traveling in Harlem, two completely different places. One is like, is very much like, oh, okay, it's, it's definitely New York. It's every stereotype you've ever saw. Harlem is like Inglewood. And I was like, oh, okay. Like everything's more residential. Like the streets aren't as confined. Like the buildings are still very like close together and shit like that. And so I get to this, I, I get to the address my dad sends me, it's somebody's fucking apartment. I was like, man, I, I know this ain't no soul food restaurant. I'm, I'm looking around. And I'm on the phone with, <laughs> I'm on the phone with the homegirl and she's just like, maybe it's like a secret restaurant or something like that. I was like, they don't do that shit over here. Like, what the fuck? So I call my dad. And I'm like, hey, you didn't tell me we we're coming to somebody's apartment. Like, is, is this your friend's place or whatever? And he goes, yeah. Like, what's, what's the difference if it, if it's somebody's apartment or not? And I was like, well, I didn't come here to hang out and like watch the football game and like do all this other stuff. Like, that's cool. But I'm in a whole different city. I'm in a whole different state. Like, I want to see what's you know, like, I want to see what's going on out here. You guys took two and a half hours just to get over here. Like I've seen 19 different parts of the city and I, literally just in a span of six, seven hours, like I've seen more of the city than you ever have in any of your trips coming here. And, um, so he pissed me off. My brother pissed me off. I'm cursing these dudes out and all this other shit. I'm like, you know what? Y'all go ahead and do that. I hop back on the train, uh, very, very conveniently heading back to 43rd to, to go to this restaurant. I get to the restaurant, bro. It's beautiful fucking restaurant, man. I posted on it. I, I posted about it on my Instagram. It was amazing. The, the whip, first of all, this was my first encounter with a woman from New York. And she said, a hey, cutie with the jean jacket. This is how I knew these bitches were on some other shit because ain't no way I'm getting catcalled going into this restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> these bitches are aggressive and so you know i'm just like oh hey what's up you know like i'm going in here blah 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 and and she was like you too cute to be sitting by yourself like what's up and i was like who is this who is this burly woman like trying to holler at me right now <laughs> like what the fuck so i i come to find out literally every trope i've ever learned about people from new york is, is true except for the fact that they're rude on purpose they're not they just have places to go um the homeless people are definitely strange strange motherfuckers for sure uh <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you can't really tell who's homeless and who's not homeless because everybody just looks kind of dirty like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in the city, there was like a ton of people that was like, you could tell like who was like from there, who was not from there, who was from like different places. But when I was in Soho, like there was like, first of all, Soho is is so strange because the borderline between Soho and what is it, uh, Little Italy or something like that, which I went to the oldest uh, pizzeria in New York. That shit is mid. Um, Damn, <laughs> it is. That shit is that shit is terrible, bro. Like it's it's cash only these motherfuckers like charge twenty dollars per pizza the, they overcook that bitch like it's just it's not great the sausage and, and like everything else was like the ingredients was pretty good the pasta sauce that they have like fan fucking tastic absolutely fantastic like if they were charging twenty dollars for just a cup of the of the fucking sauce okay i could see it but twenty dollars for that nasty for that flat ass nasty ass soulless ass pizza fuck that hell no so anyway uh, 
I go to this restaurant, this girl's hitting on me, like we're having drinks, it's her and her three other friends and stuff like that. It's getting to be like one o'clock, anime girl is FaceTiming me. I was like, hey, you know, like these are the people I just met. And she was just like, oh my God, like you're making friends out there and blah, 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 or whatever. I'm chopping it up with the bartender, how long this dude has been there. He's like, you're not from here, huh? And I was like, nah, not really. Like what kind of gave it away? He's like, yeah, you have a like a vibe that you're from here, but you're like, I can clearly tell you're not from here. I was like, oh, no, nah, it's because I'm I'm from L.A. It's like it's basically like the same thing. Like we just have a smaller miniature scale of Manhattan there, like just in downtown L.A. And he's like, oh, man, I, I've always wanted to go to L.A. and blah, 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 blah. And so the girl that was originally talking to me, she goes, you're from L.A.? I hate L.A. niggas like they so blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, but you it was fine when you were having a conversation with me and you were like halfway down my throat when I first got here. <laughs> And so, you know, like she was pretty cool. I got her number, her friend's number. And like the bartender was like, yeah, next time you come, like just, you know, ask for me and like, we'll get you like a couple of drinks on the house, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff. So like, I'm actually making friends while I'm here. It's dope, man. It gets to be like two o'clock in the morning. I was like, all right, I got, I got to get out of here. Like I got to go back to the hotel. My dad and my brother are blowing me up still. And they're like, hey, where, where have you been? What did you do today? And blah, 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 blah. So I'm telling him. I had a New York adventure, my boy. Like I was everywhere. <laughs> like I, I got to see this, I got to see that. I got all these pictures and blah 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 blah. And my dad was like, "Man, it sure must be nice." Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, what did you do? Oh, uh, you sat on the New Jersey Turnpike for about an hour. All right, <laughs> bitch ass. So, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, and the third day was the Giants game. So that was on Sunday. Um. So they ended up going to the game and we ended up having to switch hotels because my dad hated the fucking Hilton. Like it was it, honestly, it was probably the worst hotel I've ever stayed in my entire fucking life. Uh, that Hilton was was fucking garbage. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was not great. Not to mention like all the rude ass fucking Haitians and Jamaicans running that place for some reason. But as, as soon as like we crossed over from Newark into Elizabeth, and went to the, uh, I think it was the, was it the Hyatt? Or the, like the Embassy Suites, that's what it was. Uh, so we went to the Embassy Suites. Everybody was nice there, but my dad seemed to have an issue with fucking everybody. Like he had an issue with the, the front desk, he had an issue with all the drivers, he had an issue with parking. Like he was just complaining the whole fucking trip. And so he was like, yeah, you know, like I wanted this room with like three beds and blah, 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 all this other stuff. And the lady's like trying to work it out and he's screaming and yelling. And so I come over and I'm like, excuse me, miss, is there, you know, I had to turn, to turn the Riz on. You know what I mean? I was like, is there any way that we can get one of the higher suites with like three beds or at least like a conjoined room or something like that? And she goes, you know what? Thank you for asking me so nicely. It's been a very rough day. We do have one clearing up at about one o'clock today. I was like, all right, bet. Thank you so much. I come back and I tell my dad, I'm like, so this is what the lady told me, blah, 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 blah. I just need your membership number. And he goes, well, she didn't tell me any of that. So how am I supposed to believe you? I was like, well, you can either believe me or you can shut the fuck up and take whatever the fuck they give you. And so he gives me his little membership card or whatever. And he's like, all right, Jay, we, we, we got to go to the game. So, and I told him, I, I was like, I don't want to go. Like after the first day and, and like, experiencing all like as much of the city as i did i was like nah i don't want i don't want to go you might as well just cancel that giants ticket like i don't care about the fucking giants i don't i don't give a shit like there's shit anyway yeah there's exactly so uh <laughs> i'm just having a good like i enjoy football i really do but like i did not come here to watch football i can watch football at home like Rams tickets are $56. If I really wanted to see a shit game, like I would just pay 50, 60 bucks and go to the fucking YouTube uh, stadium. Like no fucking problem. So I'm staying in the hotel waiting for one o'clock for our check-in so the lady can give me keys and everything. They leave all of their luggage with me. They hop in the rental car and they take off. It takes them from Elizabeth to, I don't know what part of Jersey that is, but it's not that far because you can see the stadium from our fucking hotel room. It takes them like an hour and a half. They're like, an hour late for the game trying to find parking that he didn't know you needed parking passes beforehand and you can't they don't do like mobile parking passes you have to print them out so you can put them on your car and so he didn't know none of that so like as i'm like getting ready to check in the room and stuff like that it gets to be like 1 15 the lady comes over she's like thank you so much for waiting being patient we'll help you with the bags because you know i have my sling on i can't you know i can't carry that much stuff 
And so the lady comes over and her and another girl come with the cart and all this other stuff. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about my dad, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. And he was like, you know what? Here's my card. You know, if anything goes wrong, you know, you can reach out to me directly. I'm the main manager here. I'm like the GM um, and all this other stuff. I was like, do you think we could get like snacks and stuff in our suite? And she was like, of course. So I get in, like they help me like get into the room. I set everything up. I'm getting dressed. I'm getting ready to go out. And then I hear a knock at the door and she comes literal silver platter, snacks, Oreos, peanut butter, cookies, sodas, all this other stuff. I'm like, thank you so much. I, I can't lift it. Can you, can you please put it down for me? She's like, oh yeah, of course, sweetie, blah, blah, blah. And she's like an older black lady. You know what I mean? She's like, probably like maybe 40, 45, something like that. And she was like, let me know if you need anything else. And she like reaches to like, give me a hug. And I was like, I don't really know you like that, but like I accept it anyway. It's like one of the side hugs, you know, because I I got my yeah. arm I got my arm like you know in a brace. So, and she like kisses me on the cheek, and I'm like, uh -huh. excuse me, ma'am. Okay, all right, watch out now. I get dressed. <laughs> I get, <laughs> I don't know what it was, bro. I don't I don't know. I get dressed. I, the first thing I figure out is how the fuck do I get to the airport? I can get to the city from the airport, and then. I basically do the same thing I did the day previous. I saw, I got to explore Central Park a little bit. I went up to the Empire State Building. Uh, I didn't realize that was fucking expensive, but that was dope. Um, I took the boat to Ellis Island to take pictures with the Statue of Liberty. That was dope. I I, I was talking to the to the boat driver. I was like, hey man, like, do you think it's okay if I like get a pic picture of like tickling her toes? He did not think that shit was funny. Like for some reason, oh. this dude was not having a good day. Yeah, whatever it was, he was he was not having it. So anyway, my dad calls me a couple hours later and he was like, hey, you know, we're we're leaving the game. Like, where are you? I was like, I'm over in Soho. I'm looking at apartments. Like <laughs> Bruh. I dead ass was looking at apartments, bro. <laughs> so you know you like I, yeah yeah i was on i was on zillow and i was on house hunter and stuff like that and like of course the places are like the size of my place and almost double the price but i was like nah like if i can keep my job like here and then just get another job while i'm there like a media job or something or if i get that studio job yeah i'm down to move to soho they have really it's like some of the places are really really nice and like within my price range so and he was like oh, okay well you know like we'll come and meet you and pick you up and stuff like that, and I was like, all right, yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a train back to Forty Second. Takes me like maybe twenty minutes to get there. I get to like the bus station and shit like near Times Square. Motherfucker calls me. He's like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like an hour for us. <sighs> Dog, you niggas just and you sitting there like, of course it was, of, of course, course it was, of fucking course, bro. So. Uh, I go to this one coffee shop with like this upstairs downstairs. I forget what the fuck it's called, but it's over off of uh, 44th and 5th Ave, I think. And it's really, really nice. Um, and so I'm hitting up Anime Girl and she and I have like a little little FaceTime date. She's having coffee at her restaurant, you know, because it's like noon there and it's like 3 p.m. here. And I was like, mm. I was like, all right, cool. Like, so that was dope for a while. Um, he comes and he picks me up and he's like, yeah, let's go find like the best pizza in the world or blah, blah, all this other stuff, which is basically like the pizza place I was telling you about. Yeah. Pizza's fucking mid, bro. Like I just, <laughs> just because you have the first pizza, like restaurant in New York does not mean it's the best, like at all. Like, and sure. I'm, I'm texting this to my mom. Like, meanwhile, I'm, I'm finding out that my dad's not paying for any of this trip. Like he's getting all this money from like my mom and like like all this all these other places right and i was at that point i was livid because i was like you mean to tell me you trying to take me around a city with somebody else's money you're crazy you are absolute the buffoonery my nigga <laughs> the fucking buffoonery <laughs> so <laughs> i'm texting my mom and i was like yeah we're trying to find like the best pizza in the world or whatever in new york and my mom was like when did you niggas go to italy <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just, I was cracking up laughing the whole fucking time. So anyway, we get to the last day. We got to turn the car in, all this other stuff. We almost miss our flight because my dad and my brother need to stop and get drinks from every fucking place to get on the plane because they want to be at least a little tipsy before getting on the plane. Bro, we almost miss our flight because me and my brother get into it at TSA and like we start fist fighting and some white lady came oh. over and started swinging at him. I was like, who the fuck does this bitch think she is? Um, 
and so like TSA and airport security comes over and they're like, yeah, we got to kick you guys off the flight. I was like, look, 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 look. Like me, this is just me and my brother. Like, and they start trying to trip us up with like questions and shit like that. So they separate us and they ask like my brother, like where he's going and he's saying one thing or whatever. Um, and we said some shit to each other that was like, you borderline, you can't take back. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. still the second this, this random white lady came over and started like swinging at him and shit like that, I was getting ready to knock this bitch out. Like it was what it was. And so I'm telling the cops, I'm like, yeah, that's my brother. Like, you know, we're going to the same place, blah, 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 blah. And the, and this other cop comes over. He goes, that's funny because he says he's going to Phoenix. He's not going to Vegas. I was like, check his ticket again, dumbass. <laughs> and he go, and I tell him, I was like, I'm going to LA. He's going to Phoenix. We're both going to Vegas because my dad lives in Vegas. Any other dumbass questions? And my dad has TSA pre-check, so he doesn't see none of this, like all of it. And so we get up to like the little machine or whatever, and he's cussing at the fucking TSA lady. And I, I run over and I ask my brother, I'm like, bro, what's what's going on? Like, what is it? He goes, nah, this bitch didn't tell me I had to take this and this and this and this out of my out of my fucking bag. And the lady's like, see, you have fucking mental problems, all this other shit. I was like, all right, ma'am, is there is there any way we can alleviate this? And then the cops come back over and they're like, you two again? I was like, no, like this lady's just having an issue with my brother and all this other stuff. And so that day I found out that my brother has no loyalty to me whatsoever, like at all, because I get back over in the line and, and I'm talking to this lady and she's the supervisor. She's like, yeah, you know, everybody's like having a hard time because these are like late minute flights and all this other stuff. And you know, I'm just, I'm just me, bro. I'm just talking it up. We get to the other side and it turns out that my brother did not have to take any luggage, anything, none of the cotton, none of the, like the bottles and, and soaps and all the other stuff. He didn't have to take none of that out. And he's like, I want to report all you bitches and blah, blah, blah. He's having his Denzel moment. And I'm like, bro, bro, bro. Like our flight is literally like 10 minutes ago. Like, you think you can leave me? And it's just what you're <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He said, you think you, you think you can have me leave my fucking bag here? All this other shit. I'm like, bro, 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 calm down. And like, so he starts to shove in me. I'm like, look, like we have to make this fucking plane. Like, my dad's already on the plane. Like, he's blowing my phone up. Like, where the fuck are you? I was like, your dumbass son is about to get arrested by TSA. And he's like, you not helping him and all this other shit. Come to find out, my dad has no loyalty to me either. Because as soon as I'm walking down the terminal, my brother is like staying back at the, the TSA scanning. He's like, I want everybody's fucking name and all this, that, and the other thing. I was like, all right, let me go see if I can like, see if I can hold up the plane or something like that. Let me, let me, I, let me not say that. Let me see if I can go delay the plane. That's what I want to say. Hold up the plane yeah, sounds crazy. So you can get on. Yeah. So I passed my dad and he's, you know, on his crutches and shit. He's like, why didn't you go help your fucking brother? I was like, why the fuck is my brother fucking screaming at TSA and all this other shit? And I'm about to get into a fist fight with my fucking dad. I was like, he was like, you know what? Why don't you get the fuck out of my face? I said, or what the fuck are you going to do? literally in the middle of the fucking in, in the in the fucking uh terminal and he's like you know what you need to get the fuck out of my face all this that and the other thing i was like what the fuck are you gonna do about it so i'm squaring up with him and i'm pushing and shoving him and then my brother comes over i was like did you make sure to get all like the manager and all this other shit my brother's like what the fuck are you asking me for i said i will lay both of you niggas out right here in the middle of this fucking terminal you niggas think you're so fucking tough this guy's a fucking gimp and you can't swing on nobody you weigh 95 pounds wet what the fuck are you gonna do so we getting on the plane angry and all this other shit, bro. Didn't talk for six hours on the way back. Nothing. Yeah. So we get ready to get off. I'm not helping my dad with his crutches. I'm not helping him with his bag. I'm not doing none of that shit. He has a, we get off the plane and he's like, Jay, I was like, what the fuck are you talking to me for? He's like, I want my Bluetooth speaker back. I chucked that shit in the fucking restaurant, bro. Like just oh. random restaurant. I was just like, chuck that shit. I said, go fucking get it. And so my brother oh, decides he want to he wanna square up with me and shit. I was like, I once again, I will lay you the fuck out because remember, you have a family to go home to. All of my all of my siblings have kids and families and shit now. My brother tells me, he's like, at least I'm not fucking lonely like your bitch ass. I was like, all right, bro. Wait till we get outside the fucking, wait till we get outside. My dad's trying to intervene in all this other shit. And I say, you're next. I got enough fucking problems with you because of you. So the fuck is it? And he goes, you know what, man? Just leave leave us the fuck alone and all this other shit. I was like, all right, cool. No problem. I got my fucking trip out. I don't give a shit. I'm talking to my mom on the phone. My mom's not being any help. She's like, well, you wouldn't have gone if it wasn't for your dad and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I also would have spent 19 hours in a hotel room if it wasn't for him. So the fuck am I supposed to do with all that? 
So, all in all, at least you learned a valuable lesson. No more group trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more group trips unless people are on my fucking agenda. So, you know, it's cool. Yeah. It was cool. I enjoyed my trip. I got a lot out of it. <laughs> um, nah, man. I like In the I last 10 minutes of that story, it didn't seem like you had the best time. Nah, 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 nah. It was, it was great. It was fantastic. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I would love to go back. I'm seriously considering moving there. Uh, and, you know, I just whatever change i was trying to find on this vacation i didn't find it i didn't get the revelation or the immediate like feeling like a different person like i thought i would but i got something else and it feels more like you know i thought i was going to go on this trip and come back with like a pet chicken or like a rooster like let's use that as an analogy i came back with an egg like but it's like a big fucking egg. It's like a demon, like a demon anime egg or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like some uh, Indiana Jones lost Ark, like giant golden sphere type thing. And I just feel very different. I feel very different about, because uh, I, I went on this trip questioning the entire foundation of like who I am as a person. And like realizing that leaving, leaving for the trip, having only two family members that are really willing to fuck with me almost no friends almost none anime girl wasn't talking to me my two other homies weren't talking to me like they were mad at me i got thrown out of a funeral my ex-girlfriend told me she hates my fucking guts she's dating some guy that she told me not to worry about all this other shit right i was dealing mm -hmm. with all of this like really really emotionally heavy shit on top of one of my what i would consider one of my close friends passing away and people not even letting me honor his memory at his fucking memorial because my ex-girlfriend is there with her new boyfriend like and i really even since that day i questioned the very foundation of like who i am as a person because if there was somebody who could have a supervillain origin story that would have been it for sure and i had to call my parents i had to thank my parents for raising me to be like a good person because if i was somebody that was unhinged bro i definitely would have aired that whole bitch out it would have been multiple funerals that day like the way that these people were fucking treating me, bro, and saying shit to me, like, like, like this dude didn't fucking matter to me. Yeah, if I was an unhinged motherfucker, everybody would have got holes like SpongeBob. You know what I'm saying? Because this, this was like some crazy shit. Because I got very close to somebody that was like a huge pivotal part of my life and my development in a very, very short amount of time. And like this dude, me and this dude were cool. Like. I, so to see him randomly pass out of nowhere and I still don't know how he passed away so you know I did uh, you know and I made an apology post because I did kind of use his face for clout because I was mad at some people uh so I made like a post like oh yeah these people were fucked up to me I can't even honor my friends uh uh like um memorial and all this other shit and of course you know the fucking twitter watchers go go to and the fucking birds go to my ex-girlfriend she hits me up the next day you're moving, you're moving sus, this, that, and the other thing, and blah, 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 and we get into a giant argument. So I had all of this like pent up sadness and energy and depression and determination all, all bundled up into the same thing. So I had positive and negative feelings like combating each other. I didn't know who I was when I was going. And then so coming back, I still don't know. But I at least know that a couple of my friends reached out. Like I, I definitely fuck with them. I don't fuck with my family the same way I thought I did. And... The same shit that I do here, I could do somewhere else and be a completely different person. So, mm. you know, if I don't, if I want to be different, I could just do things differently. So, you know, that's kind of the biggest lesson that I learned while I was out there. So, or at least coming back. So, you know, and I also learned that nobody really does have your fucking back. Like, even people that say they do. They kind of don't because everybody has like a limit as far as they can go. And I truly was feeling like I was behaving rationally, but that's only because it was in first person. To watch the shit that I was doing and saying to people, not just on the trip, but before the trip and to like all these other people, I was kind of like, damn, am I going crazy? Because like in, in movies like, you know, The Shining or uh, anything involving like an insane asylum, the people who are going crazy don't know they're going crazy. They think they're acting rationally. So it was one of those moments where like you're in a room full of people, right? 
and you you see a fly and like the it's like buzzing around you and all this other shit but nobody else sees the fly so you're acting rationally thinking like i'm trying to swat this fly and people think you're swinging at him and it's like no 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 there's there's a fly in here and nobody sees the fly but you so i very much was like trapped in that for like a month a month of like feeling like that so and so now that i'm back i'm kind of just like i'm just chilling like i i have nothing left i'm exhausted i'm exhausted of like energy i'm exhausted emotionally um i just i i have nothing left bro the only person i want to give anything to is myself and the few homies around me that's it and then as far as like girls i'm only dedicating my time to like one specific girl now that like she's really proven like no i fuck with you but not in like a romantic way it's really more like oh hey i have 20 free minutes do you want to watch an episode of anime with me on facetime like outside of that <laughs> like uh, no for real bro like i i only want one ca very casual like i don't want it to feel like pressure and it doesn't feel like pressure with this girl even though all summer like we've just kind of been going back and forth and now that i i have completely shut the door to my last situation and like all of that is done like i'm i'm ready to like spend more time with this girl and because i i i fucked everything up and like you know yeah we may have been talking while i was in new york and stuff like that I think she only wanted to talk. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I think she only wanted to talk to me because she, she like missed being able to interact with me every single day. So now we're back to playing Genshin. We're getting ready to hang out next week. Like all this other stuff. I only want to dedicate this time to my friend. That's it. Anybody else? Like, I, as my homie, as my homie Louis says, you're just a fucking hole. Like that's it. If you're not her, you're just a fucking hole. I don't care. Like, so mm. you know but anyway yeah man now i'm i'm gearing up to to do full content creation shit uh i met somebody out there who was at the wtf studios um alex media he goes by and he was just like look man like any of the plans and stuff that you have like don't say that shit out loud like you may be wanting to manifest it by saying it out loud but like say it after you've done it and so you know mm uh as of today i can actually say this i've recorded four videos um and now we have the podcast so um nice yeah i'm actually like dedicating time to doing this and just gonna be quiet about everything bro and just like let the let the work speak for itself so nice congratulations thank you man thank you i i, f I feel like a whole i don't want to say a whole different person but i feel like I feel like I have entered the Kang variant <laughs> version of me. Like, I just don't care. Like, I just don't care about anything or anybody except for, like, the five, six closest people in, in my life. Like, some of them, like yourself, may not be physically nearby, but, you know, if it... And, and not only that, getting the, the realization that a flight to New York is only 200 bucks, that's two Benjamins, bro. It's like nothing. <laughs> like... Like, if I really wanted to, I could just, like, fly there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't require a whole lot of money. I mean, except if it's, like, November, December, which I wanted to go for New Year's. But, like, that's just going to be, like, Ooh, three, yeah, luck. it's about to be cold as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be depressed as fuck. Yeah, it's going to be, like, three, four K to go. Way. Like, I'm I'm not doing that. So I, I pushed it and me and Anime Girl are probably going to go in February because it's still going to mm. be cold. And if I'm considering moving there... Uh, I need to experience the extreme cold while there. So, mm. yeah, from the comfort of of a hotel room, preferably. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it's one of those things where, like, I realize I do have the entirety of my life in front of me. And you remember how I used to say, like, oh, yeah, to me, time feels differently. Like one hour to somebody else feels like three hours to me. Mm. I feel like from this trip, it has drastically reduced that time. An hour for me, an hour in real time now only feels like an hour and a half. Mm. So I feel like I've gotten so much stuff done and it's only 1230 here. So I have five other things I have to do today. I'm meeting up with this girl for sushi later, which I kind of don't want to go. But I mean, I've already made the commitment to go. I got a YouTube meeting later today that I have to do uh, with like a... Uh, one of these he's not a red pill content creator but like he's kind of a big deal he's got like two hundred thirty-five thousand subs and he was like yeah you know I'm, I'm i have this coaching program and 
we can do like a 45 a 45 minute free call and like all this other stuff and these are the people i've worked with i was like all right man if it's not more expensive than the other coaching thing i have then yeah sure why not i, I said fuck it it's free it's 45 minutes who cares like if i get something out mm. of it i get something out of it if i don't i don't you know so but yeah man got the rest of my life in front of me it's v- very very interesting situation well welcome back to the land of the living thank you man i i, I actually feel like i'm living now <laughs> There you go. Yeah, before I had uh, getting out of bed was fucking difficult. So I mean, it still is difficult now. Like, like when you hit me up earlier, and I was like, I was like, fuck, man, I I don't want to get out of bed. It's also because I was hungover too. Like, I took my mm. buddy out last night, um, you know, just as a, a thank you dinner, and we went to this new barbecue place in downtown. Spent like two hundred and thirty bucks. I was like, whatever, it's not that. Like, it's for my homie. Like, any any of my homies that have my back during like turmoil, like, yeah, I got you. So. Uh, by the way, uh, next week I have a gift for you. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't say no because it's just like it's already, you know what I mean? It's like it's already in motion. So you know, I got something for you. But anyway, <laughs> can't say no. <laughs> you That's can't say great. no. Uh, anyway, so yeah, man. You know, we went out, we had drinks. Um, I hit on some fat girls. You know how I do. Uh, <laughs> there you go yeah man I, I was feeling like myself i was feeling like a more evolved version of me hold on yeah i'm gonna definitely i'm gonna have to cut that out it's not it's is this one dude with like 12 huskies like 12 baby huskies and he puts them in like this little cart when he takes them to walk in like the front courtyard of my apartment bro and they just make so much goddamn noise like and him and his girlfriend they just like they're super loud and obnoxious but anyway uh what the fuck was i saying uh, you feel like more like yourself hidden on fat girls? Oh, yeah. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> that's close. Anyway, no, I was just feeling more like myself. Like, I, like we went to this place in, in uh, downtown, and it's like half of it's a brewery. The other half is like a bar and like restaurant and stuff like that. Uh, so we went over there. And like, yeah, there's some bigger girls that hang out there. And like, it's a very large Asian community over there. So they're like thick Asian girls and like... I'm kind of my type not the asian part but like the thick type i mean there's thick hispanic <laughs> girls that come there uh, what man i'm just saying uh, damn it i don't discriminate all right i don't i don't um <laughs> so i'm just like you know hanging out with my boy and everything like that and i offer this one girl a drink her and her friend and you know they seem pretty cool we sat next to them and chit chatted for a little bit i didn't want nothing from none of these girls man i just it was just nice to feel like i was in my body again it felt it felt nice to be myself that i could actually like talk to people and so you know that that felt dope man i, I really enjoyed that so it's cool it's cool i feel like myself again there you go yeah not fully 100 percent because there's you know still parts that are just like fuck that we're not doing that anymore so but yeah man how, how how are you i know i was gone for for a cool minute how have you been uh i've been all right i just kind of i kind of phoned it in for the last couple weeks to be honest it was like i don't know i felt like i i guess maybe in a sense i was like you i was like a big fucking zombie for like the last two weeks like i just don't i don't know i just wasn't feeling it hmm. uh i don't I feel like I'm losing progress in a lot of the areas I wish I wasn't, but other than that, like, I'm kind of getting back into it, getting back into, like, where I want to be, but it's also very difficult right. to get back into it. Like, I'm just, once you fall off, it's like, damn, I don't want to go back to, to good, like, grinding regularly, if that makes sense, like, going back to the where you want to be. The, we're like trying to make improvements excuse me the climb part is is extremely hard yeah it's difficult but like i i just gotta do it even if i don't want to it's, sometimes it's hard to be like well i'm just gonna sit down and uh you know what i mean not do what i need to do and i'll just fuck off for like 10 minutes or i'll delay it another 20 or you know what i mean or whatever right so fuck that i just gotta get i just gotta I gotta do it you know what i mean like i i can't just sit here and do nothing i feel this yeah it's fucking I, I hate phoning it in but sometimes it's like ugh. sometimes you just do it sometimes you just phone it in 
right do you feel like you're not necessarily uh, i don't want to say like falling off but like from i i, <laughs> I fell off hard. <laughs> i guess i I, off hard I, I, I guess i kind of because it's like you know it's a it's a little vague like i don't know like where the position you wanted to be at compared to like where you are now and like uh i just want to like take care of my fitness and things like that and mm-hmm. like kind of i don't want to lose weight like i don't really need to lose weight i just want to lean up you know what i mean get some muscle on me right oh, that's so not, it's not uh too difficult uh it's not but uh sometimes it's just like i i be getting so sore sometimes because of like practices and shit like that when i get that sore i just don't like I, i'm out for like a day or two i got for some reason I, I go super hard, like I, I fall off for a while, and then I go super fucking hard. And then like I destroy my body, and then I can <laughs> barely walk and barely breathe type of shit. And then uh and then I like don't want to do it again because I'm out for like two days. Right. And I'm just so sore and it's just like, oh fuck that. And I'm stretching too, that's the worst part. Like I'm stretching and doing all that, but have you tried it's, just like taking that method and then reducing it a little bit like instead of like hitting that wall you know just pull it back a little bit you know what's funny i like if if i haven't done it like if i haven't worked out in a while i'll just i'll just go fucking stupid like i don't i don't really think like mm. oh maybe i should not i just go f- as hard as i physically can and that is uh that fucks me I get you. I get you. Because you haven't done it in so long. It's just like, all right, you have to get back on that horse. So you got to like push as hard as possible. Like see what the new limit is and stuff like that. I get you. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like don't be pussy now. Like you were able to do this two weeks ago when you were, when before you were being lazy. It's like try and hit that peak again. Yeah. It's just like now you have, now you feel like you have to prove something to yourself. So you have to go even further than that. Cause you're like, exactly. yeah, I didn't fall off. And then next thing you know, you're like, your arms don't fucking work properly. <laughs> yeah literally there was yeah. one time i went so hard like it was it was diff- like i couldn't lay down like and if i did lay down like trying to wait like get up it, it hurt my my core so badly my core was so fucking tense that i just couldn't fucking breathe for like a second holy shit trying to get up i was like oh shit yeah you're doing you're doing too much brother <laughs> yeah yeah dial that back down and then the worst part is i'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I was doing that for a while and I converted to a new way of doing it. I think I talked about it on the show a couple of weeks ago, or I guess a couple of months now, um, where I changed my like one hardcore workout a day to multiple small workouts throughout the day. I find that I do way more reps, way more cardio time, way more everything if I just do it smaller increments and just do it for over a long period of day. So because I'm working from home, obviously like once an hour, I can like stop and like exercise and stuff like that. So Mm. I kind of do, instead of doing a super set, I do half a set and just set a Mm. timer every hour for like nine hours a day, like nine times a day. Like I'm doing the same single, like the same set. I'm doing like 20 burpees, fucking 50 pushups. Like I'm running for three minutes or something like that. Or I'll go outside and like do half a mile. And like, I do that once an hour, every hour. And I, Mm. I find that I'm less sore but I have way more progress because in the last couple of months, I went from being able to, I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. This is gonna be very, very embarrassing. This is probably gonna be the most embarrassing thing I've ever said on this podcast. I went from doing 12 straight pushups. Like that was my max mm-hmm. at, at, at the current age that I'm at, right? I could do 12 before I'm like, <sighs> I had to fucking stop. After a yep. few weeks of training, just like that, probably like two, three weeks, I went up to 87. 87 was the max I could do in like one set, like just keep going, just keep going without being sore. Like, and that's how I knew like, okay, this regimen is working for me. And um, although a lot of people say when you physically exercise, it'll make your mental better. That's, uh, I don't know, I I don't know about that. Um, Not 100%. Yeah, not 100% on that one. I can't, I can't prove that one. Um, Only because I kind of felt worse because I was like, damn, like I have, I, I like m- my physique is getting better. Like, why am I not? I, I mean, but then again, I had a completely different goal at that point in time because you know, trying to get your bitch back and everything. You're just like, oh, but I'm, I'm better than ever. Like physically, like why did why does this bitch not want to come back? But anyway, um, 
<laughs> fucking pathetic. <laughs> fucking pathetic. Anyway, so yeah, I uh, I changed to that regimen and it was really good. The only problem with me now, and I mean, obviously you don't have this issue, is like my shoulder is still kind of broken. So yeah. I tried to do a push up the other day and it's been three weeks, four weeks since my su fucking surgery. <sighs> Bro, I can barely lift up water bottles. I, I can't fucking do push ups. Like I can feel my body weakening because yeah. I physically can't keep up. Like mm. I tried to do a push up yesterday and heard my shoulder crack. And I was like, fuck, like I have to ice it for three days now for yeah. it to go back to normal. So, uh, yeah. I kind of regret getting the surgery, even though like I have more motion in my arm now, like I, it, it, there's no pain when I lift up my arm, like internally, except for like, you know, the parts that are still sore and shit like that. So, I mean, once again, mm. you don't have to deal with that. But like, if you ever get to a point where like not being able to do basic shit, that that shit fucks with your mind, bro. Yeah, I just I have a small injury. Uh, I have a subungual hematoma. The fuck is which that? Which is, you know how you drop something? I, I dropped something on my toe. I was like helping my mom lift something mm -hmm. that I should have just lifted on my own, to be honest. But she <laughs> insisted. Uh, I end up drop. I didn't have a good enough grip on it. Mm. And I dropped it on myself. I dropped it on my toe and it hit a particular point. And it was a pretty heavy object. I think it was a bed frame. Mm. Um, I dropped it and now my toe like. Oh, you fucked it up. I didn't. F well, yeah, it's bad. It looks bad, but. Um, that shit purple? <laughs> I can't. It's like, it's a bunch of different colors. It's hard to explain. Oh, you got one of those yeah it's well it's like underneath the toe it should be fine like i didn't uh there's there's a proceed what the fuck there's a procedure for uh not nah, going my mom is screaming sorry <laughs> uh wow, there's a procedure where you like grab a, a like a pin or something a pin or a needle or some shit you put it on fire or whatever you get it really hot and then you like put it in the toenail and it's supposed to let the blood drain um but i don't want to go to the doctor for that is that it, it should heal on its own but it's still gross to look at oh yuck yeah yeah you gotta it's pretty you gotta gross. you gotta drain that motherfucker man go to the doctor bro it'll it, it's me. a put like it's a the thing is with the injury it's fine it's like it doesn't hurt it i'm only supposed to do that go to the doctor if it really hurts mm -hmm. um it still doesn't it doesn't hurt uh i can move my uh, I can move you lying my toe to me? around and shit. No, I'm not lying to you. It doesn't hurt oh. at all. Oh. It just looks gross. It'll, it'll, it's supposed to clear up, but it's supposed to clear up in like nine months or something. I was going to say, yeah, it'll, it'll probably be. And it's a, been a couple months. Yeah. it would probably be a little bit faster if uh, you had gone to the doctor when it happened, but, you know. Yeah, it was like, at, it was too late. Like, I would talk to my mom and she was like, oh, it's not that bad. Shit. Well, sorry. That happened, yeah, bro. whatever. Fuck it. Yeah, it'll be all right. Tape it, tape it to one of your other toes, man true yeah that's what i that's what i, I did care. when i when i crushed one of my toes man when i was uh working at that factory a couple years ago um and like moving pallets and stuff around and i broke my two of my toes i just wrapped them motherfuckers together <laughs> my doctor was like why the fuck did you do that i was like it seemed like a logical thing to do like they're both busted like i can't use them they might as well hang out together like <laughs> so <laughs> So apparently it, it was it it was okay because like they just had fractures and instead of taking six months since I like bound them that way and they did not move for like three months, he healed up in like four. It was perfectly fine. So nice. although my pinky toe on my right foot is kind of like bent inward a little bit and the nail hasn't come back yet, but I mean whatever. Yeah. yeah. So who cares? I don't get my toes sucked like that anyway. It's all good. So I'd hope not. Not with injuries like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, that's pretty you bust much. Open the feet, and it's just like, oh no. Yeah, what, yeah, what the fuck is going on here? These joints used and abused. Yeah, nah. This new girl I'm talking to, though, she kind of, she kind of into that. So I'm like, um, uh, nah, I'm okay. Like, you gotta let her know, like, hey, man. I'm not like, gonna back lie in, to you, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. She's fugly enough just to let me, like. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. She's like she's like a little bit below average, but I think because of where I'm at in life and she provides great conversation, I I feel like I have to like politely fuck her, like because it's already like <laughs> we've, we've talked about it a little bit, and I'm like only like ha like a little physically attracted to her, and it's just like 
but you know when you've like gone so far and you've like talked about certain things and you forget what this person looks like like i pulled up her picture the other day i was like oh i forgot this is who i was talking to <laughs> bruh what i mean listen now now that i don't have somebody around that cares about the shit that i say like the patreon is basically useless like <laughs> I can say whatever the fuck I want. Like, I have no repercussions whatsoever. I'm not fucking Charlemagne the God. I'm not fucking Drink Champs. I'm not any of these other podcasts that have serious repercussions for the things that I say. It was literally just, like, arguments that would be started based off of, like, these little fucking birds that would go and tell this this bitch what the fuck I was saying on my fucking podcast. Like, these motherfuckers were more, of, more fans of, like, my tweets, my Instagram posts, and my fucking podcast than anybody else. So it's just kind of fucking crazy. You know what I mean? So it's kind of had the birds telling people about what we say on the Bruh, fucking podcast. Yeah, man. Like there was one time she said something to me. She was like, "Oh yeah, I heard about this from you know you posted about this or whatever." I was like, "I didn't post about that. Like that's not something I posted." And that's how I found out. Like these birds were telling her what I was saying on the podcast because it was verbatim something I said on the podcast, and it was like, <laughs> and it was like it involved Legos and all this other shit. So she knew it was about her. And it was just like, you understand I'm a fucking content creator. Like, I I'm just going to say shit just to say shit. Like, sometimes I may embellish things just for, like, the hee-hee-ha-ha -ha, funny funnies. But, like, I some of this shit is true. Like, yeah, okay, you did say and do all these things, which is, which is unfair, and we laughed about it on the podcast. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Maybe you should be more concerned with the fact that you did this fucked up shit that I was talking about. But no, you want to be concerned with something your dumbass, big-headed ass friend said. Okay, all right, cool. Same motherfucker who, who went and told me that you got a new boyfriend. So you might want to be careful about that. So same motherfuckers who told oh, me God. that you, you know, didn't even wait two months for the, for the dirt to be resting. And it's funny because I'm going to go ahead and air your shit out, bitch. Uh, oh. It's interesting oh. that, you know, <laughs> you got this new boyfriend and everything, but we're still emailing me nudes. Like that was, that's very interesting. So, you know, oh. still trying to come over to my place and fuck me with French toast in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it is what it is, man. Like uh, you get a burner bitch, you, you have like burner bitch situ situations and scenarios. That's all it is. So, you know, fuck them. Fuck all them fucking people, the fucking fake ass motherfuckers. Like, fuck that shit. I want to run phase with every single one of them, bro. Honestly. Like, if I'm just being really real, like, every single one of them in particular, one particular girl, like, I wish I had more of my, like, hood female friends around. Like, now they have kids and all this other shit. Because if, if I were to, like, really, like, do some fucked up shit, I want this bitch's skull caved in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I got motherfuckers that will do that shit. So, and she, she really needs it because she just be butting her nose into shit. That's none of her fucking business out of context. Be telling wrong information and shit, ruining my fucking relationship, bitch. All right. Yeah. 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 Just, you know, go in and go and enjoy your fucking marriage. How about that? Like stay out of other people's fucking business. Seriously. Oh my God. Yeah. I guess it's a good thing. I didn't post that one episode then. Which episode was that? Uh, the one before you left. Why you didn't post that one? I thought you did. No, no, I posted one of them. I didn't post the other one. Now nah, we got to post the other one, bro. Got to post the other one. The other one was like... Got to make that shit public, too. Okay. Yes, sir. Public? Yeah, public, public. Nah, that shit going not on the that TikTok. one. Not that one. That shit one. going on the TikTok, bro. One. Absolutely. Nah, 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 that, that one. Nah, put that shit on there. <laughs> put that shit on there, so. bro. Absolutely. Nah, I, I need I the clips. I we need you, might to... Have to, you might have to run that back. You might have to put that in the earphones. I got it on the YouTube. It's just not... I gotta make a thumbnail. All right, all right, for sure. You might want to sure. listen to that one back. All right, yeah, 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 for sure. I'll do that today, man. So I don't even know how to make a thumbnail for that. One. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But yeah, man, Mr. International is back home. Mr. Domestic Flight is back home. So you know, mm, there you it's, go. It's cool, man. I'm ready to do more shows, man. So Mr. Statewide. Mr. Statewide. Yes, sir. Mr. <laughs> Lower East Side. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, sick individual. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it for me today, man. You got any up updates or anything you want to tell the people what's going on? Um, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. I got. I just gotta do it. You know what I mean? If for sure. Uh, if things are going down, uh, you know, Twitter will be the first place. Either Twitter or uh, on my Twitch account. 
all right for sure for sure we look those will be the the first updates all right for sure can't wait to see that uh so if you guys want those socials they're going to be in the description of this episode uh we want to say thank you guys so much for listening man uh if you're listening to the audio version thank you so much make sure to rate it five stars on apple and spotify if you're watching the video version of this thank you guys so much go ahead and run those likes up also leave us at least two comments if you made it to this part leave us at least two comments what was your favorite part of this episode and you know just what are your thoughts make sure they are two separate comments it really helps us with the algorithm really helps us like pick the show back up and if you guys want start clipping our episodes honestly if we say something funny clip that shit put it on tiktok tag us in it we would love to be able to see uh because we don't we don't re-watch the episodes like we just really don't like we make them and i then, do when i'm editing real uh, yeah <laughs> when he is editing yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah when i am editing. that's about it but i mean other than that you know we don't really we don't really pay too much attention to it. So if you guys have favorite parts and stuff like that, make sure to send us clips, man. We, we really would like to go back and like rehash some of these conversations and stuff like that. But we want to thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, this has been the Canon Culture Podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Make sure to keep it canon. <laughs>